your Westinghouse Summer Theater. You can be sure if it's Westinghouse. You can be sure. Whether it's a jet engine or the world's most automatic washer. You can be sure. Whether it's a giant generator or one of America's largest dams. The only frost-free refrigerator or America's finest television set. You can be sure if it's Westinghouse. For your home, for your business, for your farm or factory. You can be sure if it's Westinghouse. Oh, Westinghouse. It sent me out to Heights Branch of the Bank. You ever worked in St. Louis in the summertime? Mr. Heights, sir, there's somebody to see you. Yes, 
Mr. Height, I'm Steve Day. Oh, yes. You're the new bookkeeper Chicago sent me, huh? That's right, sir. I hope you like it here, Day. Thank you. Well, suppose I show you around, huh? Sir. This is Mr. Barker, our head teller. New bookkeeper from Chicago, Barker, Stephen Day. Oh, oh how are you, Mr. Day? How are you? <laughs> First day on a job is no fun ever. But this guy, Height, at least tried a bum joke or two, even in that weather. <laughs> Thank you very much. And uh, here's Joe Pearson, Stephen Day. Well, glad to know you, Mr. Day. Are you Mr. Pearson? We, uh, we keep them well caged, Day. Eh? Can't claw each other in the struggle for a desk of front. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Maybe they're both out after my job. Oh, I guess Mr. Day sees through your little joke. No one could take Mr. Height's place. Ah, oh, lesson ahead. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Joe had your job not long ago. Yes, sir. Well, an empty teller's cage. Well, you can't tell, Day. If you do well here, you might get locked in that one of these days. And then back here we have the vaults. And naturally, the all-important bookkeeping department. Now that's what you're interested in at the moment, huh? Yes, sir. Now you're about to meet our prize exhibit. From here on in, we're gonna pin you up with a rabbit. <laughs> Here's a new man for you, Stephen Day. This is Ralph Swenson. Golly Moses, he was a rabbit. Hunched over that bookkeeping machine, blinking at me with watery pink eyes, and holding out a limp white paw. Glad to meet you, Mr. Day. How do you do? No, Day, I'll turn you over to Ralph. Oh, he'll keep you busy. He's the fastest man on an adding machine west of New York. Why, he even won a gold cup for it. Didn't you, Ralph? <laughs> You spilled that ink outside the rail. I, I don't know, Mr. Height. I, I didn't. Well, we'd better clean it up, hadn't we, Ralph? The janitor's late getting in today. Oh, uh, yes, by the way, Ralph, uh, when you go out to lunch, I've got a little errand for you at the post office. <laughs> kind of hot, isn't it? <laughs> Guess I'm just not used to it yet. Oh, you... You don't live in St. Louis, then? No, 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 no. I'm from Chicago. Oh. What was that about a gold cup? Something you won? Oh, that? Well, uh, that's just a prize they gave me at the Bankers Association School. I, I had a 98% uh, rating. Well, Mr. Day, if you're so hot, you'd better take off your coat. Thanks. Watch out now, Ralphie. Remember the last time the main office pumped new blood in here? <laughs> What does he mean by that? That's Barker, our, our wit. He means Joe Pearson, one of the tellers. <laughs> oh, yes, I met him. He started back here, didn't he? Yes, when he was promoted, I remained here. Well, do you think you can take cell life, Mr. Day? It's unlike the penitentiary in one respect. We don't have periods for exercise. <laughs> now, uh, th this is where you work. This is your desk. And uh, so you might as well get started on these checks. There. Let's see now, your half-yearly audit should be coming up soon, shouldn't it? Just about two weeks. It's no picnic, I can assure you. Yeah, I was afraid that they transferred me about two weeks too soon. <laughs> well, what's the matter? Holy smokes, I've never seen anyone play one of those machines like that. <laughs> Snap off that button there, will you? Uh, what? That button there, it, it drips. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't know. That's okay, you're new here. Uh, every man in the four years I've been here, I, I've had to speak to about that button. 
I'll try to remember, I hope. All right. Sometimes I, I think they let it drip just to rip me. It may sound odd to you, Mr. Day, but that water cooler is the one thing in this high pressure madhouse that throws me. I, I just lose track of the figures. <clears throat> well, no, there's one other thing. And I mean thing. His Royal Highness, Mr. Height. Another dollar. Hmm. For the vice president, you mean? Yeah. <laughs> uh, the heat was really on today, huh, Joe? Well, I'll say. Hi, Hi. Hey. Huh. Only a couple of weeks, and I see the rabbits already got you trained. <laughs> you learned fast, eh? Well, when, when Joe here worked in this department, he, he never could seem to remember about that button. You know, <laughs> Did somehow you? or other, it always kept slipping my mind. Say, has he given you that routine yet on wedded bliss? No, he, he hasn't told you all about his wife. Well, he has told me oh, that he's married. Oh, certainly. Well, what kind of a freak do you think she is? <laughs> you mean to say that you fellows have never seen his wife? Oh, no. not me. No, that's a treat I have in store. You know, one of these days, instead of visiting the zoo, I plan to take a lettuce leaf. <laughs> Hi, Ralph. Hi, Ralphie. <laughs> well, I, I'm glad to see you fellows left some water in there. Day and I will be needing it before we're through tonight. <laughs> Say, Ralph, what does your wife do on these nights when you work late? She reads. No kidding. I thought a grammar girl like that would be out dancing every night. <laughs> hey, Steve, oh. you, you want to get Ralph to tell you about this super marriage of his. Yeah, <laughs> if it was any of my business, I might. Oh. <clears throat> Ralph. Well, another warm night, hey, boys? Oh, oh, I say it is. It is. <laughs> Oh, uh, Ralph, I just remembered this is the night you stay late, isn't it? It works out that way usually on the big audits, yes. Yes. Well, you've got a good man helping you. Steve, here's a comer, what? Oh, yes, uh, Ralph, I was going to ask you to run a little errand for me, but never mind. We need you for the audit tonight. I'll get a messenger from Western Union. Well, good night, boys. Good, good night, night, Mr. Mr. Height. Come along, Joe. Oh. Before we get started, we'd better go around and get something to eat at Tony's. I, I've already told my wife I wouldn't be home for supper. Okay, Ralph, let's go. No, I'd much rather go home to eat because my wife's such a wonderful cook. She cook all the time? Uh, yes, but, you know, in the audits, I have to stay. Oh, Ralph, I almost forgot. Have you finished that analysis for me? Yes, Mr. Height, I finished the analysis. Good, I'll pick it up in the morning. I may be able to land a big account with it. The main office will be very pleased with us. Oh, yes, sir, very pleased. Well, uh, good luck with the audit. Why, that fool, cashing in on your brain. Why do you let him do it, Ralph? Well, it's all part of the job. Someday I'm going to... Ta Ron, we'd better get some dinners. that you've seen part one of The Rabbit, let's turn to our Westinghouse program and Betty Furness. Hey, listen to this. Well, looks like Betty's getting something real interesting over that old crystal set. I sure am. And I'm going to let you hear it. Yes, now you can trade in your old radio, even one with your phones, on a beautiful new Westinghouse television set. Just imagine being able to get a trade-in allowance on a practically prehistoric model like this when you buy a brand new big screen Westinghouse television set. 
Or maybe you have an old crank-up phonograph like this up in your attic. Or perhaps a television set like this with a real small screen. Well, right now, your Westinghouse dealer will give you a bigger-than-ever trade-in allowance on any of these outdated models when you buy a beautiful new Westinghouse television set, like this table model, for instance, in a handsome mahogany cabinet with a huge 17-inch screen. Or perhaps you'd prefer a console, like this Westinghouse Brentwood, with the extra-large speaker for better sound. But whichever style and model you prefer, you're going to want a Westinghouse. And why? Well, for the best answer to that, ask a Westinghouse owner. A recent survey has showed that seven out of ten Westinghouse sets sold in the last few months were bought because someone who already owned a Westinghouse set raved about it to a friend or a neighbor. Now, you couldn't ask for a better or a more sincere recommendation than that, could you? You probably heard the good news that the National Collegiate Athletic Association has chosen Westinghouse to sponsor their televised college football games this fall. So if you can't get to your favorite games in person, see them clearly with no picture waving and no sound distortion on a Westinghouse set. Westinghouse sets really top the market today. And remember that Westinghouse and only Westinghouse bring you the National Collegiate Athletic Association football games. Now don't forget, if you have an old radio or phonograph or television set, see your Westinghouse dealer. Under the new federal regulations, the chances are that your trade-in allowance will cover the down payment. But, a word to the wise, this liberal offer can't last much longer. So tomorrow, see your Westinghouse dealer. Remember, you can be sure if it's Westinghouse. And now let's return to Westinghouse Summer Theater and the rest. run them through again for six cents. I told you the half yearly audit was murder. I'll keep your eye peeled for one we took for seven. It's more than a single mistake will be. Wait a minute, I got it. I, I got a five cent error anyhow. Look here. Good boy. Well, that accounts for five out of the six. Now all we need to do is find the other one. Yeah, well, don't get excited. Sometimes it takes all night to dig up one missing cent. I know. I'm bushed. Let's knock off for a minute. Oh. Even this last coffee is cold, but now... Anything cold would be all right with me tonight. <laughs> you know, Steve, you've been very friendly. You know, that's the first time you called me Steve. That's the first time you called me anything, as a matter of fact. But friendly, I don't understand. Why shouldn't I be friendly? Well, most people aren't, that's all. I, I mean, where I'm concerned. Oh, you're just imagining things, Ralph. No need to argue, Steve. I, I'm perfectly aware of what goes on around here, honestly. How do you mean? Well, at first, when, when you came here, I thought you'd be like all the others, you know? Competing every minute of the day. But you're not. At least you don't seem to be. Of course, you'll probably be promoted before long. Promoted me? <laughs> Fat chance. Well, it happens to all bookkeepers, but one. Me, I, I'm just the office boy around here. If you mean that silly remark that Height made about you, you can forget that, Ralph. No, I don't mean that. That's just his fun. That's, that's his way of needling. In fact, they take more pleasure in the needle around here than any lady's sewing guild I ever heard of. Like today, for instance, over at the water cooler. Even when I'm not here, they, they say certain things to you. You can't see past this face of mine. 
Like a rabbit. They even call me a rabbit, don't they? Ralph, I don't listen to anything they say about you. Now listen, don't let my face fool you, Steve. I'm not so dumb. They think I have no guts, but I'm not so dumb. I know what goes on around here. Our ambitious Mr. Height knows I'm not dumb, too. You've noticed how he, how he keeps riding me, thinking up degrading little errands for me to do at noon, or even worse, after work? Ralph, just run down to the post office with this, or, or wipe up that ink that someone dribbled, or you don't mind dropping this off on your way home tonight. He knows perfectly well, Steve, I live clear to the other side of town. I'll miss my bus, get home an hour late for dinner. Why do you suppose he does this? I don't know, Ralph. I never stopped to consider why. Well, I'll tell you why. And I'm not bragging either, just to bolster my own ego. Height's afraid of me. What? He knows if he keeps me tied to this desk, he... He'd be afraid of his own job. Oh, now look, Ralph. I know you're smart, but things like that don't happen in a big bank. Listen, I hit a higher average at that Bankers Association school than anyone ever made there. Two years ago, they named me for a promotion. But Height's no fool. No. Others have come and gone on up. Joe Pearson was the last to pass me by. Height knows as long as he's, he's keeping me tied to this desk, he needn't worry about them or about me. You shouldn't be so good at this job, Ralph. Just facility, this job, Steve. But if I could... If I could move out of here, on up there, if Height would just give me a break. You know, it's funny. But Height thinks I'm afraid of him. He mistakes my hatred for fear. I don't care about the others, they don't count. It's only height, 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 and I hate him! You really mean? What's that? I don't know, I'll see. Oh, it's only you, Tony. Thanks very much. Good night. Remember, we told you to bring us some more coffee at four if he still saw light. Is it that late? Yeah, hot coffee. You know, it's exactly what I needed. How do you like yours, Ralph? Oh, I think just with cream. I may have brought some rolls here, but I'm not very hungry. Here's some Here's a donut. Plain. I like that. This one is mm. with milk. Why don't you turn out the lights, Steve? We'll drink our coffee before we get back to work. Oh. You know, my eyes feel like red hot coals. Steve, you said I meant it, my feeling about height. You want to know why? Why? It's because of Jenny. Jenny? But I don't get you. How does she fit into this? You see, Steve, Jenny's my whole life. I, I don't say much about her around here. One night when we were working late, I made the mistake of telling Joe a little about her. He, he spread the word. Somehow it makes them laugh to think that I, I can tell you, Steve. In their parts little lives. They don't know. Any one of them. What a woman like Jenny can mean to a man like me. No, I guess they don't, huh? You know, Steve, when I first met Jenny, it was like a man stumbling on a gold mine. She's She's so beautiful, and she's in love with me, with me. Imagine, it seems like a miracle. Every night, when I, when I get home, just the way, just the way she looks at me, it's, it's like discovering a whole new world over again. You know, four years ago, I visited some cousins of mine who have a farm in Minnesota. Jenny lived on a farm nearby. And when I met her, for the first time in my life, I, I felt complete. 
And when she, she looked at me, it didn't occur to her to see a rabbit. You see, she, she believes in me. Without her belief and her understanding, I'd be nothing. Just a sort of leftover. I guess you're lucky, all right. Yes, I'm so lucky. I'm so lucky. It's a miracle I, I still don't understand. But height, height, those heavens for height. Jenny knows how he keeps writing me. I wish he didn't. It demeans me in her eyes. I mean, I'm afraid it will someday if it goes on. I don't believe she realizes I don't believe she realizes what he's doing to me. Look, why don't you get out of here and start in someplace else? Well, maybe I will. Maybe I will, but you see, a year ago, we lost a baby, a little boy. Jenny was ill for a long time. I'm still paying all those bills that but I... But if you went to Hyde and you had a knockdown drag, I'll talk about it all. Oh, don't be a fool. You only make one of his jokes about that, too. No. No, except with Jenny, I seem to have no luck in my relationships with people. You want to know something, Steve? What? Height's a thief. Oh, now, come on now, Ralph. Yes, Not height. Yes, he is. He's a common thief. Come here. I want to tell you something. Before height came here, he'd been a teller in the St. Joe branch of the bank. He'd handled the account of Benny Mills, who runs that gambling spot, you know, the Four Leaf Club. Well, six months ago, then he got into a jam. You know, he needed a lot of cold cash over one weekend. And Height was just the man to get it for him. How do you know all this? I checked. On Friday night, he came back late, just as I was putting the files away in the vault. He told me not to bother to go on home. I guess he thought I'd gone, but actually I'd, I'd gone in there to wash up. And when I came out, Steve, I saw him. I saw him take a big bundle of bills out of the vault and put them in his briefcase. Then he set the time lock at 7 a.m. on Monday morning instead of 9 o'clock, the usual opening time. But how did he get the money back? On Monday morning, he came back a few minutes before 7, waited for the vault to open. Then he put the money back and set the, the time vault at the regular opening time. Holy smokes. And he charged Benny $5,000 for that little service, and nobody except me was the wiser. Well, he took some chance, supposing the bank examiners had decided to check over the weekend. Oh, he's clever, all right. A week later, he suddenly remembered he had a long-lost brother in Montana who died and left him. Guess how much? $5,000. $5,000. Well, now you're catching on. Well, he got away with it. Why didn't you turn him in? Without any proof? No. But when he pushes me around, I'd like to... Gosh, look at the time. We still got that big, important penny to pin out. Ah.
It's only you, Barker. Shame, shame, shame. There's nothing in the daytime. Can't you take late hours any longer, Ralph? I bet your wife wouldn't approve of that. Now leave us alone, can't you? Well, who? But for your information, Mr. Height, we worked all night on that audit. We even slept here for all of two hours. Well, that's the right spirit. Remember what Horatio Alger said. Honest toil rewards itself. <laughs> or something. Not in this bank. How'd you come out on the audit? If it hadn't been for Ralph here, we'd still be hunting one rotten penny. I'd hate to have Ralph checking up on me if I were an embezzler. Did you get some lunch? Yeah. I'll... I'll take that analysis you made for me, Ralph. Thank you, Ralph. Better lay off the rabbit bark. She's had a tough night. <laughs> Hiya, Sonny. Gentlemen, <laughs> warm day, huh? Certainly is, sir. Well, draw up some chairs, won't you? Thank you. This is Mr. McGee. My name's Ellis. We've got a coming little business a few blocks up the street. Well, we decided it was time to open an account. Well, that's exactly what we're here for, gentlemen, to serve this part of the community. <laughs> Straight back into the left. You can't miss it. Well, as I was saying, Mr. Ellis, we're always pleased to welcome new depositors, especially neighbors. Oh, snap that off there, can't you? I beg your pardon? That, that water cooler there, you know, see it drips. Yeah, here. Oh! All right, hands up, ladies and gentlemen. This won't take long. You don't look very tough to me. Suppose you get some bills out of the cages. Watch it, Grandpa! Get a move on there, bud. Now, the next one. Come on, come on. Now, get those sacks and fill them up. Give me that bag, please. You wouldn't take all day and get me pinched in here, would you? No. All right, all right. Put them in here. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Stay right where you are. Remember, we're watching you. Thank you very much. Shall we go? Oh.
after all existing records well, of that alarm. Well, of course, I, I never would have taken that pledge. Oh, sure. None of us have anything to brag about except maybe Ralph. Are you feeling any better, Ralph? No, 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 no. You're going to need a stitch in that car. That's the guy to take a look at Hey, hey, fellas. Yeah. What do you know in broad daylight? Not a cop in sight. Did they get away? Yeah. I kept shooting at them, but they had too much of a start. Yeah. He's got some cops. He's yeah. got some. Well, oh, say, I told Hype Ralph was badly hurt. He said he'd better send him home. Oh, sure. No, well, yeah. I'm going home before I think you clean up my own blood. Oh, sure. a moment and look at our program again. Frost in August. Say, don't tell me we've got frost in this kind of weather. Well, if you have an old-fashioned refrigerator like this, it's apt to frost up faster than ever in the hot weather because the chances are that you're opening it more often. And what a nuisance it is to have to scrape the frost off the freeze chest and empty the drip pans and do all the messy chores that go with defrosting a refrigerator. Believe me, you'd find life lots more simple if you owned this sensational Westinghouse refrigerator that never needs defrosting because it always keeps itself frost-free. And what's the trick? Here. It's this magic counter button. The very moment that frost starts to build up in the freeze chest, this magic button gives a signal, and every tiny trace of frost is wiped away immediately. And as for drip pans, well, the Westinghouse Frost Free just doesn't need them because the defrost water evaporates. It simply vanishes. Now, there are other refrigerators that claim no defrosting. Some of them have a kind of a, a clock device that turns the refrigerator off, and then there are others that have heating coils that, that heat up around the freeze chest to melt the frost. Yes, there are others, but the Westinghouse Frost Free is the only one that has been tested and proven for 10 whole years all over the country in kitchens just like yours. And so, well, wouldn't you rather have a refrigerator that's proven itself under all conditions? That's why I'm sure that you'd prefer the Westinghouse Frost Free. And remember, the Westinghouse Frost Free defrosts itself so quickly that frozen foods and even easy to melt ice cream stay safely, steadily frozen. I honestly think that the Westinghouse Frost Free is the very finest refrigerator that you can buy. But that's not just my opinion. Drop in at your Westinghouse dealers and he'll show you hundreds of letters from women all over the country. And they all say there's nothing that compares with the Westinghouse Frost Free. Remember, you can be sure if it's Westinghouse. We return now to Westinghouse Summer Theater and the rabbit. Hi there, Ralph. How's the head? Oh, fine. Fine, Steve. I'll be in tomorrow. Oh, you sure you're feeling okay? Take your time, Ralph. Sure, I'm all right. Say, Ralph, I thought you'd like to know that the got one of the holdup men yesterday over near Alton. The Illinois state cops were tailing them. The hood smashed up their car. One of them was killed and one got away. Money bags spilled all around the wreck. Was all the money returned? All but $7,200. I guess the one that got away put that in his pocket. Yeah, probably. Oh, Steve. Mm -hmm. Steve, would you like to come out tomorrow night and have dinner with us? Gee, that'd be swell, Ralph. I've been meaning to come out all week, but we've been sort of busy around here. <laughs> well, I'll be in tomorrow. Okay, Ralph. I'll see you then. So, so long. So long. Well... How is he making out? Oh, hello, Barker. Ralph's doing fine. He's coming in tomorrow. Guess his wife's taking good care of <laughs> The rabbit's glamour girl? Boy, that's one female I would really like to see. What kind of woman could he marry, anyhow? <laughs> the Henderson account, I, I, I think it's overdrawn. <laughs> Better hurry, it's almost six. 
Oh, you're finally going to meet Jenny, Steve. Oh, you'll like Jenny. She's wonderful, but <laughs> I told you all about it. I'm anxious to meet her. She's anxious to meet you, too. She sounds like a swell girl. Oh, she is, Steve. You know, I, I just don't know what I'd do without her. <laughs> you know, it won't help your social status here being invited to our home. You're the first person from the bank we've ever invited to dinner. Do you know that? Well, that makes me feel I very... I think the honest. bus should be along the moment. Well, we Lucky I caught you. Downtown is screaming for this escrow report. Just drop it off there on your way home. Oh, Mr. Hyde, did you have to do... Yes, I had to. What, do you think I invent these little errands for you? But, but tonight I... Can't I you get a messenger to take it? I'll pay for it if the bank can't afford it. Oh, but I couldn't trust a messenger with this. We need someone responsible, like Ralph. Somehow I'll bet he knew you were coming home with me tonight for dinner. Look, let me take it. I'll go. What? Let a guest run the errands? I should say not. Now, you give that back to me. Now, look. There's a bus across the street, a number three bus. It runs every 20 minutes. Now, look, Ralph, I don't want to go barging in without you. Well, now, you run along. I'll be there shortly. Jenny will make you feel at home. You wait and see. Pretty strange neighborhood. When I got to Ralph's address, well, it looked like a tenement. looking place to live in. Come in. Come in. Oh. You're Mrs. Swenson? Yes. Well, I'm Steve Day, Ralph's friend out at the bank. Oh, won't you please come in? I, I was just cooking dinner. Oh, what are you staring at? You're a bit surprised at our apartment. Yes, that's it, the apartment. I mean, way out here, why, it's perfectly delightful, Mrs. Swenson. Oh, please call me Jenny. It's a dreadful building, isn't it? But Ralph and I have tried to keep all that outside. Where is Ralph? Oh, he'll be along. He had a little errand to do for Mr. Hyde. Mr. Hyde? Mm. He told Another errand tonight. He told me to come along. What kind of an errand was it this time? Oh, oh please forgive me. I, I didn't even ask you to sit down. Please. Oh, your hat. I, I am sorry. Oh, no, please, don't worry about me. I'm having a fine time. <laughs> Is something wrong? Well, to tell you the truth, Jenny, Ralph told me how beautiful you were, but I never imagined anyone like you. Thought it strange that Ralph should have a pretty wife? No, no, no. It's just that husbands exaggerate, that's all. In this case, I don't think Ralph did. Thank you. Well, as we have to wait, I, I better go and see that nothing burns. to make something special for you tonight. You're the first person who's ever come here from the bank. Oh, we get along pretty well. We're going to have apple pancakes for dessert. Apple pancakes? I love apple pancakes. Lots of cinnamon and spices. Yes. Ralph told me you like to cook. He's very proud of you. Yes. You've done wonders with the apartment. Oh, I did the painting. Ralph chose all the colors. 
The lamps and the curtains I made myself, after Ralph's design. Why, I never knew Ralph had any interest in design. Interest? Why, Ralph has many interests. Don't you know anything about him either? I'm sorry. It's just... Well, no one ever realizes what Ralph is really like. Oh, I wouldn't say that, Jenny. What do they do to him down at that bank, Steve? What do they do to him? What do you mean? Well, that Mr. Hype. The errands he makes Ralph run. He uses him like a messenger boy. What, to the downtown branch, to the post office, to the depositors. What, even out for a sandwich for Mr. Hite's lunch. And at night, when he's tired and hungry, and he, and he should have a warm meal in him. Do you know how many nights a week he sends him out? Yes, I know. Ralph told me all about Two it. Two or three times, every week. He's late, like this. And the dinner waits, and it gets cold. And then... When he does come home, he's, he's so tired, it would break your heart to see him. He just sits right there where you are, hating himself, Mr. Hyde, and thinking, I don't know, thinking what I must think of him. Ah, oh, it's a shame the way Mr. Hyde treats Ralph. And he's a better banker than all of you. I know he is. Yes, you know. They should. They give him a gold cup because he's better than all of them. He's lightning in his mind with figures, and then what do they do? They treat him like a servant, and, and they use him like a messenger boy. By the way, where is Ralph's gold cup, anyhow? Cup? We sold that to pay the bills for when the baby died. That's why you don't see it standing out where you could be proud of it. I'm sorry, Jenny. Please forgive me, Steve. But it's just that... I've had these things inside me for so long. And you're the first person ever to come here from the bank. I'm glad I came, Jenny. Steve, I would like you to know Ralph better. I would like you to know what a really fine man he is. He, he's not just one of those freak men. You give him 50 figures to add up, and you'll give him the answer like that. No! He's, he's much more than that. He's... he's do you see this? He painted it. Oh, I don't know anything about painting, but this looks awfully good. And there are many more in the other rooms. He did them long ago, but before he was so tired. And he could do them again if he weren't so sort of dead inside. He shouldn't have stopped painting. No, he shouldn't. Look, look at these books. Look, they're not just here for show, Steve. They're not just here so that if a neighbor comes, he'll say, Milton, Dick, and Shakespeare. No, he reads them, and he loves them. And he's taught me to understand and love them, too. Uh, look, look, just open it, see? See how, how the pages are worn from his fingers? And he could tell you page after page by heart of what's in it. Do you know what this is? It looks like flute. No, it's a recorder. Have you ever heard of a recorder? No, I can't say that I have, Jenny. It's a rare instrument from Shakespeare's time. You didn't know that, did you? Look, Jenny, I know how smart Ralph is. You don't have to impress me. I've told you really nothing. Why? Oh, it's very late. The dinner will be ruined. I I'm very sorry about the dinner. Oh, that's all right. You tell that Mr. Hyde tomorrow that he owes you a dinner. <laughs> Steve, Mr. Hyde respects you. You'll be a teller like the others one day. But let me tell you something, Steve. Ralph won't be there. He's not going to be a bookkeeper very much longer. Of course. He's going to be bigger than Hyde. I hope so, Jenny. I want to tell you something, Mr. Steve Day. Do you know that Ralph could have this Hyde fired, but he won't do it? Did you know that? Yes, I know. Ralph told me all about it. Yes. That sending him $5,000 from Montana, that's a joke. I said to Ralph only the other day, Ralph, please, you must tell. You must tell, get rid of him. With a new manager, you can advance. And then Ralph, Ralph tells me how he has outsmarted Hyde. He's going to make Hyde pay for kicking him around. Sure, 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 someday he will, Jenny, someday. Someday? Someday. You don't believe me, do you? Well, I'll show you. I'll prove to you how smart Ralph really Jenny. is. You wait! Jenny, please! Jenny! 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 He fools you all! 
He fools the whole bank. Nobody really knows how smart Ralph is. Jimmy, I didn't say Ralph wasn't smart. But he's that smart. $7,200. With his head split wide open. $7,200. Bank robbery? You mean he took some money for himself, too? Yes. He put it in his pants pockets until he got into the washroom, and then he tied it around his waist. That's how smart he is. He's going to be bigger than height. Oh, only because he looks like a rabbit, you all think he's a fool. But he's not! He's much better than all of you! going to tell High Tide was quitting to raise rabbits in Montana. Oh, darling, darling, I, I have to show Steve how smart you are. I have proved it. Yes, Jenny, you've proved it. So you think I'm a rabbit, too. No, no, Ralph, no, no, it's, it's just that, that, that they, they don't know you, darling. I, I had to show them that I was proud. Even you, Jenny. Even you. Well, never mind, it doesn't matter. I, I know. I, I know you had to do it. Look, I'll be going now, Ralph, and I swear I won't say anything. I won't say a word if that means anything to you. It doesn't matter now, Steve. We got some big envelopes. I think so. Would you bring one to me? No, you, you sit down and address it. Print it, I mean. In large block letters. To manager, Ferguson Street Branch. I'm glad, Ralph. Rabbits don't need money, Chevy. from the robbery, it's back. The whole 7,200. Oh. Is it?
now here's Betty Furness to talk about the good old days. You probably don't remember, but back in Grandma's day, ladies actually wore costumes like this when they went for a ride in a horseless carriage. And back in those same days, a New York State farmer named Clarence Timmerman started using the actual Westinghouse electric motor you see right here. And now, after 48 years, he still uses this amazing motor to power his feed grinder, saw, hay hoist, and so on. And just think, this year, electricity will be available to 95% of America's farms. That's why, starting August 26th, they'll be celebrating Farm Electrification Week. Of course, this old electric motor made by Westinghouse is amazing, but the new ones are even more so. Here's a brand new Westinghouse Lifeline motor with the same horsepower, but it's a third smaller in size and weight. And isn't it smart looking? The metal in this clamp is all steel. And watch this one. Now there's real proof that a steel motor is a lot stronger than a cast iron one. Two generations ago, Westinghouse built that motor to last years longer. And now, through the genius of Westinghouse research, they've modernized their motors like this one. The Lifeline motor is another Westinghouse first. All steel, stronger, and lubricated for life. Don't you agree that these two mo motors prove again that you can be sure if it's Westinghouse? Benson saying goodnight for Westinghouse, makers of more than 40 million products for the American home. All summer long, Westinghouse is bringing you the summer theater, and we'll be back in the fall with Studio One. And don't forget the exciting football news. Remember, beginning in September, Westinghouse and only Westinghouse will bring you all the football games televised by the National Collegiate Athletic Association. And now, goodnight.